Hello and welcome back to An Old Man Watches, where today I'm going to be talking about the probably the best of the many Jaws-inspired killer fish films, 1978's Piranha. And the movie starts with a couple of teenagers hiking through some woods. Uh, they stumble across an apparently abandoned compound, ignore the no-entry signs, and sneak inside in hopes of finding a dry place to stay the night. Instead, they find a couple of large reservoirs of water, which inevitably leads to some skinny dipping. Given the name of the film, you can probably work out that our two youngsters rapidly find themselves becoming fish food. Now, a few weeks later, an investigator from the big city hires a grumpy local to lead her up the mountain in search of these missing teens. This pair also illegally enter the facility, where they find the signs that the backpackers were there. The investigator decides to turn on the pumps and empty the pools to see if the youngsters drowned, and though, of course, she doesn't know it at the time, in doing so, she releases thousands of mutant piranha into the local river system. Mutant piranha? Yep, these aren't your normal everyday killer fish. They've been genetically altered and bred by the army to be tolerant of cold water. Why? Well, allegedly, the plan was to release them into the rivers of northern Vietnam, but the war ended. Try not to overthink this explanation. The film certainly won't. Unfortunately for the investigator and her companion, they won't learn any of this backstory until they are already on a raft in the middle of the river. Oops. Anyway, the race is now on to warn people downstream of the impending danger, which is a problem that will of course be compounded by the self-interested of certain other parties, much as Sheriff Brody's efforts to close the beaches in Jaws were thwarted by the mayor who didn't want to upset the tourist trade. This film is not subtle about where it's drawing its inspiration. Now, long before The Asylum mocked their first buster, we had cheapy knockoffs of bigger-budget films. Uh, and whenever there was a sniff of money to be made from low-budget filmmaking, there was a good chance you'd find Roger Corman's name involved. Thus, the existence of Piranha, which Corman produced through his company New World Pictures. Released in the same year as Jaws 2, this film is pretty much as blatant a cash-in on Spielberg's monster hit as Universal's sequel was. It's a better film than Jaws 2, though. Uh, to be honest. Even Spielberg himself has called Piranha the best of the Jaws ripoffs, and he would go on to work with this film's director, Joe Dante, on several occasions. Now, I also like Piranha. It's not without its flaws. It's obviously a pretty cheap film with occasionally patching acting quality and uneven special effects, but it's an entertaining movie nonetheless. So let's talk about some of its features. And let's start with the fact that, ironically for a film that is so clearly cashing in on Jaws, the main strength of Piranha is that it still manages to carve out its own identity. Key to this, I think, is that Piranha are a very different menace to a great white shark. Instead of being yet another movie where a single big animal stalks the characters, this one features a swarm of much smaller predators. It creates a different dynamic to the attack scenes. Um, both because you don't have that single big creature to focus on, but also because as a swarm they can attack lots of people at once and you can, you can stage different kind of attack scenes. Uh, the film also throws in the wry humour and macabre whimsy that characterise the best of New World Pictures' output. Uh, this would also pre prove to be a motif of then still novice director Joe Dante, who would later go on to deliver a little film named Gremlins, amongst others. Now... I will admit that the film's humour is not 100% always an asset. The script does sometimes insert moments of near slapstick in between the more tense scenes, and that does make for some odd tonal shifts, but a lot of the humour does add to the film. And at least it is smart enough not to inject humour into the tense scenes themselves. Um, Piranha recognises that laughs ease the tension, which is the opposite of what it wants, and it gives the suspenseful scenes the space to actually be tense and suspenseful. And this sense of tension is helped by the fact that Piranha are consistently depicted as aggressive and effective killers. The film always treats them as a real and deadly danger, and it never makes the blunder of having the Piranha themselves be the target of the humour in the movie. Nothing undermines a monster like playing it for laughs, and Piranha smartly avoids that mistake. Helping the attack scenes work well is the fact the model fish themselves also look pretty good, or at the very least, Dante and his crew successfully disguise any significant shortcomings uh, via smart composition and shot structure. Perhaps most importantly to producing tension, the film is much more successful than most of this sort of film at making you feel like any of the cast could die. There's a genuine sense of menace in the piranha attacks that many killer critter films fail to deliver because you can tell pretty easily who actually has a shot at surviving. That's a little bit less the case here. 
Now, of course, this was still a Roger Corman production, which means that any money spent had to end up on screen. Uh, and I suspect that may be the explanation for uh, an early scene in the film where a small CGI fish puppy thing lurks within a room the main characters are investigating. Uh, the characters don't see this critter, and the creature is never referenced again by the film. Um, I do wonder if this whole scene was included very much on the basis of, well, we, we paid for it, uh, the footage exists, so we better use it, or Roger Corman will get mad. Uh, maybe there was a drop storyline. I don't know why it was left in, though, if so. Anyway, and yeah, there's little things like that. Piranha won't be to all tastes. Uh, it's gory and schlocky and unashamed of that fact. But uh, if you think Jaws would be improved if it had a, a much higher body count and occasional forays into silly silliness like a stop-motion fish puppy thing, then it's a movie you should check out. Next time. In 2010, Piranha got a remake, uh, and whereas the original was a movie about killer fish that featured occasional nudity, uh, the remake felt more like a movie about nudity that featured occasional killer fish. Uh, despite that, it's actually also quite good fun. Uh, but that's next time. Until then, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you've seen today's movie, let me know what you thought of it.